what's the difference between praying or speaking in tongues and the gift of tongues? The answer is there is no difference. The difference really is in the purpose and use of the tongues at the time that they're spoken. Now, oftentimes the idea of the gift of speaking in tongues has led a lot of believers to believe that uh, speaking in tongues is only for some people because it depends on whether you have the gift or not. But that's not true. Today, I'll be looking at what really is the Bible talking about when it talks about the gift of speaking in tongues. Welcome to Words Simply. My name is Petunia and I like to simply share the word. If you watched my last video, you know that I was going to do a part two and in this teaching we'll be looking specifically at the differences between interpretation of tongues, the gift of tongues and speaking or praying in tongues, right? So welcome back if this is your second time. In the last video, I looked at specifically Mark 16, uh, verse 17, which shows that speaking in tongues is a gift that belongs to every believer. Jesus says, these signs will follow them that believe they will speak in new tongues. So speaking in new tongues is something that belongs to believers, right? Um Let's look at this idea of the gifts of speaking in tongues or the gifts of tongues. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12, right? I'm going to start at verse 1, okay? Uh, now, it's important that when you read the Bible, you read it in context. Uh, this is one of the main reasons I like to do these teachings this way. We read paragraphs and not just one verse because a lot of the meaning is lost and there's been so much misinterpretation of scripture because someone just took the scripture out. So I'm going to be looking at the context of what is happening in 1 Corinthians 12, what is Paul talking about. Now, um, start at verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, if you have a good Bible, you'll see that the word gifts is in italics. That means that it wasn't in the original text. The interpreters, the translators added gifts there to sort of make sense of the sentence in English. And given the context of what Paul is talking about, they thought that gifts would be the most appropriate, right? But it's not in the original text. So actually, this verse could read now concerning spiritual brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So Paul here is teaching about spiritual things. And part of those spiritual things are gifts. Now, he talks about diversity of gifts, uh, difference of administrations, operations. So part of those spirituals, gifts, administrations, offices, operations, right, all found in this verse. So Let's talk about the specific one, the gift of speaking in tongues, right? So he says in verse 10, to another the working of miracles. So he's listing all the gifts given. Uh, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So then in verse 11 it says, but all these work it that one and the self same spirit. So all of these manifestations are the manifestation of the spirit. In verse 7, he says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So the manifestation of the, of the spirit, which is manifested through these gifts, is for the profit of everyone. So Paul, if you study First Corinthians here in the chapter before, in the, ch the two chapters following, he's dealing with uh, the administration of the church, um, how the church should operate, right? In the previous uh, chapter, he talks about communion and how we should wait for each other. And here he's dealing with spirituals. And even in, in chapter 14, he talks about um, how 
the gifts of the Spirit should actually be administrated within a church service, right? So he's dealing with those kind of things. So here he lets us know that the gifts of the Spirit are for the profit of the church, right? They are meant to profit with all. Now, I want to go back to verse 11. It says, but these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So now, maybe you might say, but wait, it says that he gives to every man severally as he will, meaning um, basically you might think that the Holy Spirit gives to some this, some that, some that. Kind of true, 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 true-ish, right? Given to every man as he will. My question is then, is there something that God will not give you? Is there something he doesn't want to give you? Because it's he gives to every man according to, as he wills, it's according to his will. So what is God's will for you? Does he not want you to have gifts? Is there something he's holding back from you? Is there something God doesn't want to give you? The answer is no. First Ephesians 1, 1, wow. Ephesians 1 verse 3 <laughs> says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Every, means every, means every spiritual, is spiritual, right? And here Paul is speaking about the spiritual manifestation of the spirit. So God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So is there a gift and administration that God doesn't want you to have? Is it outside his will for all his kids to have all the gifts? No ways. That scripture proves that exactly. I'll even show you um, in First Corinthians 12, Verse 31, at the end of this very scripture, verse, at the end of this chapter, Paul instructs them, but covert earnestly the best gifts, right? He says for them to desire the best gifts. Why would he want them to desire something that they can't have, right? Um, let's go, let me just open this up just in case uh, someone might be struggling to see Okay, so he says, covert earnestly the best gifts. Again, in 1 Corinthians 14, right, he says, uh, in verse 5, he says, I would that you all speak with tongue. So his desire was that everybody could speak in tongues. So he wouldn't wish it if it wasn't possible for them to speak in tongues, right? Um, again, in verse 13, he says, um, Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Now, if you remember verse, if you remember chapter 12, I'll go back to it. Um, interpreting of tongues here in verse 10 is one of the gifts, right? So Paul says the one who's praying in tongues must pray for the interpretation, must pray to interpret. So you can pray to have that gift, that ability, right? Someone might then say, uh, what about Romans 12? Let's look at it. Um, I love it. Romans 12. <laughs> As I forget where Romans is. Romans 12, verse 6, right? Uh, I'm going to read it. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, with a prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith. So on the surface, the scriptures implies that you think that, okay, we have gifts differing according to the grace given to us. Thus, if you have a particular grace, you have a particular gift, right? But do you know that you can attract more grace in your life? The Bible says in First Peter that, Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. So the more you know God and God is known through his word, the more you know him, the more grace in your life and then the more gifts you can operate in. But very important, the latter part of the scripture says, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith so that ability prophecy is also one of those gifts of the spirit um 
with a prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith. So your ability to operate in that gift is based on your faith, the portion of faith. But the good news is that the Bible tells us that he has given to every man the measure of faith. And even above and beyond that, the Lord has told us how we can grow our faith. If you want to operate, to prophesy deeper or you want to i don't know walk in any gift um deeper it is just about growing your faith about that particular gift right and we know how to grow our faith faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god right so i hope that covers it so i encourage everybody to study uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, if you want to understand the gift of speaking in tongues or speaking in tongues. So this is what I want to say. The gift of speaking in tongues is simply speaking in tongues and speaking in tongues happens for different purposes and different reasons. So in the previous video, I covered how the personal praying or speaking in tongues and Paul in this very uh, 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 chapter, uh, verse 4, he says that he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Um, so when we pray in tongues, speak in tongues, we are edified and strengthened on the inside. And when we pray in that way, the Bible tells us that we're speaking mysteries. That's verse 2. We speak mysteries in the spirit. We're speaking to God. And then in this very same chapter, I want you to read it very carefully. Paul goes into in and out of different types of tongues, right? He speaks about praying in tongues. He speaks about um, prophesying in tongues. And he speaks about, um, yeah, the interpretation of tongues, the gift of interpretation, right? Let's look at it in another angle. So when I was growing in the faith, there was always this idea of the gift of tongues being uh, that uh, prophetic tongue that is given and interpreted and thus gives a prophetic message to the church and that's what was called the gift of tongues so they were separated into praying in tongues like everybody and then the gift of tongues which is um that sort of prophetic message given in tongues but uh with the if you read the bible kit you'll see that it's all one in the same thing. The tongue that I speak when I pray is the same tongue that I will speak uh, when I give a tongue's prophetic message, you know, and I interpret or someone else interpret. Um, so I'm going to explain that. I think let's go to verse five. It says, I think actually I'm going to reduce this a bit. I would that you all speak with tongues but rather that you prophesy for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues except he interpret that the church may receive edifying so he's talking about this um ability so i'm sure you've been to church where someone gets the message in tongues and it, they interpret it or someone else interprets it and it's what the lord is saying to the church at the time and that message then edifies the church so what i'm saying is this is another manifestation or use or purpose of tongues it's not necessarily something separate or different it's just another way in which tongues are used in the bible and you can use too right so i hope you have understood what i'm saying i think more than understanding tongues and obsessing about gifts and, and 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 it's important that we understand that all these gifts are the manifestation of the spirit of god the holy ghost in you so remember when we receive the holy ghost we received him in full everything that god has is mine because i'm one with him the bible says that we are joined heirs with christ that means everything he's got i've got when the Holy Spirit moved into our spirits, He came with everything, all of His power, all of His glory, all of His ability that includes all of His gifts. So it's up to you to exercise your faith in that. If you want any gift, if you want any manifestation of the Spirit, 
exercise your faith in that and you can get it it's god's desire to grant you the kingdom i thank you so much for watching this i hope you found value in this i hope to see you next time and if you did find value please remember to like to subscribe to share and to hit that notification button so that you're alerted when i post again thank you so much hope you have a blessed week bye bye